creating your own custom worlds in Spatial. By now, you're probably well versed in adding objects into someone else's FWC quarter planet line world in Spatial.io. Today, we're going to learn how to make our own planet line world that others can personalize and add to. I'm going to do this from my personal free account rather than the Planet Walker paid creator account under the assumption that most of you will begin your journey using the free version despite its limitations. You start by clicking on the plus create button on the top right of the screen. Spatial.io does give you a bunch of standard templates to work with, 10 to be exact, but they probably won't serve our purposes, with the sole exception of the outdoors template, which has an animated campfire by a lake in a forest with some logs to sit on and can serve as a context for wilderness conservations. Making a custom space using Sketchfab assets. Let's start with a blank spatial world where it says upload custom space and learn how to work from scratch. You find your avatarian self in a purple hued blank world with a grid representing the floor and a ghostly screen to help you find the center of the world. You find a white plus button up at the top right next to the backpack and to the left of the chat button as usual. Remember that spatial is a social space that people use for collaboration, so you can always invite friends into your world to comment and talk with you as you develop your world. If you have the paid version at $25 per month subscription in 2023, those friends can edit along with you. But if you as the host creator are on the free version, nobody except for you can do the creating. Still, they can come in and explore your evolving creation with you so you're not alone. Note that the plus button is exactly the same one you use to add objects and content to somebody else's world and gives the same options. The two of most interest to us now are Sketchfab, which accesses the Sketchfab account you would have created in the last tutorial, and Upload, which accesses objects in your computer hard drive. We'll start with Sketchfab. What we're going to do differently now is simply assign certain objects to be the environment and the skybox that will define our brave new world. We're starting by going to Sketchfab again, where in the first tutorial we got our animal objects. Why starting with a photosphere skybox doesn't work. To fully immerse you in the process, we're going to start with the skybox simply to show you that this is not the right place to start. We do this because many people intuitively feel that if they take a photosphere on their phone, they can replicate that landscape in spatial, and that's only partially true. So once we're in the search menu for Sketchfab, we will select a pre-made skybox by inputting skybox in the search area. I scroll down until I find the simple skybox photosphere of clouds and click on that. It comes in as a spherical object in front of me. I click on it and it gets a blue bounding box and a menu appears at the bottom of the screen just as we saw in the last tutorial. And this is true of all objects you bring in. And the default condition is the position, rotation, and scale of the object, but in this case we aren't going to mess with any of that. Instead, we want to click on the Set Custom Environment button on the bottom, the third from the right or the seventh from the left in the row of nine buttons that appear. It looks like a little mountain icon. Clicking on it gives you a menu that lets you transform the selected object either into a custom environment or a skybox. In this case, we choose skybox. But, uh-oh, it gives us an error message saying custom environment needs to be set first. Good to know. Let's move our skybox photosphere into a different place so it doesn't interfere with the landscape when it comes in, and then go ahead and grab an environment model, trying to find an appropriate landscape for a custom environment. I go back to Sketchfab and try out various prompts in the search bar to see if I can find something pre-made that I can bring in. It seems someone has done a scan of a boardwalk in the forest that might suit our purposes nicely. It looks a lot like what we have in Florida nature parks. If only it will work. We have a tendency to search for other people's models that we think will work with our project and save us labor. And this can sometimes be surprisingly effective, but most of the time it fails spectacularly. Keep in mind that much of Sketchfab is user created content that is updated constantly so you never know what you're going to find. Now, when I bring this boardwalk into the forest model in Spatial, I notice my computer starts lagging considerably. This is a consideration. 
Many drone or camera scan photogrammetry models are memory intensive, containing too many polygons in the mesh to make them look photorealistic. And they have not been optimized for normal computers or internet speeds. And this is why you may want to spend time learning how to make your own optimized models that you can load from your computer. But that is beyond the scope of this brief tutorial. For now, let's see if we can get anything useful from this. Once again, as with the skybox we brought in, we want to hover our mouse over the landscape object we brought in until it turns into crosshairs, then click to select, producing a blue bounding box around the object and revealing the edit menu on the bottom of the screen. We don't have to change the position of the model, the default option, since we're going to set it as the custom environment. What will probably happen at first is that your avatar will find itself suddenly falling through the floor, going right through the new environment, because the grid floor you started with is no longer the floor, the scanned meshes, and it's going to come in in the wrong position and at the wrong size. And that's why it's useful that Spatial gives you a dialog asking you if you want to edit the position. You'll notice that as you brought in your custom environment, Spatial automatically puts a default skybox in the background. It shows mountains clothed in pine trees and a sky with clouds. In the middle of that, Spatial will try to establish an environment with mesh colliders situated at ground zero. But sometimes, even often, things go wrong. Now, often when you click on edit, your character is so busy falling you can't do anything because you can't re-click on the object to get into edit mode again. If that happens, you'll have to delete your world and start over, unfortunately. Ah. How to delete a world that doesn't work. Well, often you will find you can't easily delete your world, and that won't seem intuitive. To delete a world, you have to be the owner, and it turns out you often have to rename the world. Normally when you create a world, it will have a default name like Innoventor's Bespoke Room or Innoventor's Digital World, because my name is Innoventor, so it'll be your name and then Bespoke Room or Digital World. And when you go back to your spaces to see all your worlds and click on the three dots to the right of the name, if you haven't changed the name, it will only give you the option to rename or copy link. So you need to rename your space, then confirm, and then reload. And only then will you see the option to delete your space. That'll be in red. That'll suddenly appear under copy link and rename. You'll receive a warning that this is a permanent deletion. Still, there's little you can do. When you get into one of these awful fall through the floor loops, you're stuck. So we have to start creating a new world from scratch, bringing in a simple floor as your custom environment. This time, I'm not gonna bring in some complicated mesh of a boardwalk in the forest. I'm gonna start by bringing in a floor and I'm gonna choose something much simpler. Let's say a leafy floor from the Sketchfab search. I'll put that floor underneath my avatar and scale it up so it's big enough to catch me when I fall. I get the same problem when I set it as an environment, but when I click on edit position and move the sliders, I can put the floor underneath my flailing falling character. And then when I hit done, my avatar lands on that leafy floor. Having established at the very least that I can import a floor from Sketchfab, I now can try to bring in the forest boardwalk that we had and try to swap it out with a leafy floor. Let's see how that works replacing one environment with another. The program asks if we want to keep the custom environment position we set for the leafy floor and I say yes since I positioned it below the character entrance position so my avatar would fall onto instead of through the floor. Unfortunately, my character still falls through so I need to hit edit again. Now, After experimenting over and over with different placements what we learn is that some objects you find in Sketchfab 
simply aren't appropriate for environments, no matter how cool they look. This one, for example, appears to be more of what we call a point cloud, little colored dots in space representing the image taken by the drone. And it looks more like a point cloud than a mesh where the dots are joined into surfaces called polygons. You're better off, believe me, finding a much simpler object to use as your environment, perhaps a bit more complex than the leaf ground I showed earlier, but less complex than a scan of a boardwalk in the forest. The sheer number of surfaces needed to create the boardwalk is really gonna gum up the computer's memory. Normally, what we do to create landscapes is to make our own in programs like Blender 3D or Unity 3D and bring them into Spatial optimized for your project. But if you're gonna use Sketchfab resources, you'll have to play a kind of Goldilocks game going from models that are too simple to those that are too complicated until you find something for your project that is just right. You might do better to search using the term landscape and see what comes up. I will try the mossy grassy landscape here. This one works. When I set as an environment, edit it and put it under my avatar, it works fine. Now you'll notice that when you set an environment, Spatial puts that default skybox that is filled with mountains and pine trees. And that may work for other states developing their wildlife corridor planet lines, but of course Florida is ostensibly flat, so you probably want something more generic that you can use in a wide variety of landscapes. The landscape I've chosen here does have mountains, but it's an arid landscape, so even here a skybox with vast pine tree forests doesn't work either inserting a skybox after establishing an environment. The best is to use a simple sky and cloud skybox, a literal sky box rather than a photosphere that includes the land. So let's go back to that first skybox we looked at for the beginning of this tutorial and drop it in. Now we select that model and set it as the custom skybox and it will replace the default one. There now, that looks much better, doesn't it? So you've created your first custom world, albeit using off-the-shelf Sketchfab assets. Swapping out skyboxes. You can swap out the skybox anytime you like. That is easy. Here's what that same landscape looks like when I drop in an urban skybox. swapping out environments. And of course, if we can find the appropriate models, we can swap out the environment whenever we like, too. Now, this may not be appropriate for wildlife corridor ideas in general, though it could be used to model and discuss urban corridors made friendly for wildlife. But the point is that you can bring in anything you like into spatial, and once you have the environment skybox pair that you like, you use the skills you developed in the first tutorial and drop in trees and cars and pictures and animals and anything else you can imagine. Although all of this is going on completely within the spatial web interface and seems simple, it can take many hours to get things to look right working in spatial this way. So once you get the concept, what we recommend is that you do your work using the creator toolkit for spatial that accommodates Blender 3D and Unity 3D. And it is to this that we'll turn our attention next, in the next tutorial.